And last week we had an incredible message. They were uh, preaching together. They were sharing together an incredible message about relationship. They were talking about restoration, about healing. They were talking about uh, putting our trust back to God. And it was something, something amazing. And something that amazed me is to know that Jesus shared the same message. He came to share the exact same message. And I remember him. He was very intentional with every single one that he met throughout his time in, on earth. And uh, I remember whenever he was uh, 12 years old, uh, do you know the story that he got lost? He got lost. He didn't get lost. He got lost. So their parents was concerned about him. They were worried about him. And whenever they got to the synagogue, to the temple, they found him preaching. They found him just sharing with the elders. And he was so easy. I can't imagine being, being a father and got my son lost. Can you imagine that? How crazy that would be? And it didn't happen one day. Not two days. They said that they realized three days after that. They were good parents, right? <laughs> I don't know what kind of parent they were, but something that I really loved that it was that Jesus was so in love with his calling. He was so in love with his, uh, whenever, his mission on earth. And I like the way to see Jesus, a, a committed Jesus. He was so committed with his calling, but also he was a, 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 a person, he was a son that he knew, he knows um, how to give honor. And I can see him, giving honor to his heavenly father and giving honor to his early father as well. He was so involved with his father business as well. He was not only preaching, but he's all, he was uh, also on the carpentry business. I can't imagine, I can't believe how kind of furniture he made. Can you imagine? Heavenly furniture, right? <laughs> he was so involved with that as well. And I love the way to see people giving honor. And also, uh, in another occasion, he was celebrating with, uh, they were in part of a, of, a, of a wedding. And you know the story as well, they ran out of wine. And you know that the Bible says in the books of Eddie, chapter 5, verse 7, no wine, no party. They ran out of, no, 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 the Bible doesn't say that. Don't go out of here saying that the Bible say that. The Bible doesn't say that. So they ran out of, out of, uh, out of wine. So his mother came to him and tell, and tell him that, hey, we need to do something. There is something happening here. And according to the Jewish uh, culture, that talks really bad about the, the husband family. It was on him. So Mary knew that they needed to do something. And he calls Jesus and he said, and she, and she told him, uh, we need to do something here. And Jesus responded, uh, my time has not come yet. It's not my time. But you know what? I don't want to get in trouble with you, mom. I will do what you're asking me to do. He knew. He knew. And I love the way that, that he uh, walks in authority. He knew his authority on the earth. And he honored, uh, he honored Mary. But can you imagine having someone in your house that can turn water into your favorite drink? So can you imagine Felix turning water into Hatsu, into Dr. Pepper? Can you imagine having something like that? How cool would it be? So, okay, I want to I wanna drink like a Mountain Dew now. Hey, Jesus, can you turn water on a Mountain Dew? Can you imagine that? How, how fun, how special was that? But Jesus, I love that Jesus was an obedient son. Even though he was not the time for his calling, for his ministry, his ministry to start, he was obedient to his uh, early authority. And he walks under that authority. So he recognized the authority, but also walked under authority. And that teach me, teaches me that it doesn't matter if I only recognize my authority. But if I don't walk under authority, that means nothing. And Jesus knew that. And he walked under authority as well. And I love this because he does this intentionally. Because he knew that he was going to be speaking to people. He was going to be sharing the, sharing the message uh, with many, many people. So he knew that he needs to do, he needs to live what he preached. He needs to walk in what he taught in that moment. So he knew about that. And I love, there is a story uh, sometime. I love different characters in the Bible. And there is one specific, I love him. I think he was Hispanic. It was Peter. It was Peter. Peter was the one that was always, always, always asking why. Do you have a people next to you that always, Why? There's kids that get to that age of why. You need to take a shower. Why? Because you stink. 
Why? Because your last shower was two days ago. Why? Are you familiar with this? This was Peter. This was Peter. Peter was the kind of person that was asking Jesus all the time different questions. So many people came to Jesus and asked many questions, some of them just to question Jesus, just to question him. But some other people were, uh, they wanted to learn, they wanted to grow. One of them was Peter. And sometime Peter came and asked Jesus about forgiveness. So and he started this conversation with Jesus about that. And, and, and Peter signed it really holy. He came to Jesus. And actually, this is in, it is in Matthew chapter 20, uh, 18, verse 21. Uh, the Bible said, Then Peter uh, came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I, forget, shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? That sounded holy, right? It's a holy number. It's the perfect number. So it might be seven. But Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times. But 77 time. And this blows my mind because I truly believe that, that Jesus liked to joke. I bet that he was preparing Peter for the biggest joke ever. He was about to heal his mother-in-law. I'm just kidding. Peter loved, Peter loved his mother-in-law. So I do. So I do. I love my mother-in-law too. <laughs> but I believe that Jesus was preparing uh, Peter for what's going to come. And I can, uh, and I love this story, and, 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 and I love how, how Peter is interested uh, on this topic. And, and Peter's answer sounded holy, but Jesus just raises the bear. Just raises the bear, and, and, and he means that it's not about forgiving. It's about the posture of your heart whenever you forgive. It is easy to say, it is easy to say I forgive you, Right? It is so easy. But, but, but what about the posture of our heart whenever we say that word? Do we mean it? Do we really mean it? And Jesus, in the end, and Jesus is, is, um, is telling this to Peter in this moment. It is, it, is not about, it is not about forgiving. It is about your heart. It is about your heart. Jesus is interested on our heart, not just in what we do. So, and we can think uh, it is easy for Jesus to talk about this. It is very easy. He's, he has never experienced pain. He has never experienced anger. He has never been offended by a friend, by the people around him. Around him. We can think that way. And being honest, sometimes this is me. Sometimes this is me just, uh, just uh, talking to God and saying, Hey, you, you don't know what I'm dealing with right now. You are not on my shoes. You don't know the pain that I feel whenever I'm waiting for the promise. You don't know the pain or making the decision to forgive someone that has hurt me. You don't know that. And being honest, I bet that you have been in the same place. I've been in this place so many times. And sometimes I get really, really angry. Sometimes I get really, really frustrated about that. Because who likes to wait? Who likes to wait? No one. No one's like to wait. That's the reason why we have microwave, right? We don't like to wait. It is better to put the microwave, three minutes, done. It's not as, as delicious, but it is done. It works. We don't like to wait. We don't like to wait. So, uh, and I believe that God was telling me that, okay, we're going to dig deep and see what is happening in this way. We can think God never experienced it. Wait, experienced the pain. Sorry, but that takes me to a, one of my favorite story in the Bible. It takes me all the way to the cross. And I want you to come with me to Luke uh, chapter twenty-three, verse thirty-two. Luke twenty-three, verse thirty-two. Oh, I need you to preach with me. Come on. Okay, it says two other men. Both criminals were also led out with him to be ex uh, executed. When they came to the place called school, they crucified him there along with the, about with the criminals. One of his right and, and other one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And I see many, many, many details in this phrase. 
And the first thing that I think is that was Jesus' decision to be there. It was his decision to be there. He had all the authority. He had all the power to avoid the cross. He could don like Thanos, who likes <laughs> Avengers, like something like that. And all sin is gone. All bad people are gone. I wouldn't be here. All peop bad people were gone. But Jesus decided to be there. So it was his decision. So he's, that shows me that that was his very first act of love. To make the decision to be there. To make the decision to be there. He knew what was coming. He knew that uh, what was coming was going to be painful. He knew that what was coming was going to be shameful. He, was that, well, he knew that what was coming was going to be humi uh, with a lot of humi uh, humiliation around him. He knew that. He knew that. So what I see here is that it is an option to forgive. It, that shows me that uh, forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. We choose what to wear. We choose what to eat. We choose where to go. We choose uh, the friend, the kind of friend that I want to have around me. We, we think, men think that choose the wife. But wife choose you. I just want you to know that. So whenever you are complaining about your wife's uh, decisions, you are one of them. We are one of them, okay? <laughs> Let's remember that. <laughs> but it was, it was, he decided, he decided to forgive. That was an extra joke. <laughs> so he decided to forgive. He really decided to forgive. It was his choice. So forgiveness is a choice that we can make. We can make that choice. And we always are in that position of uh, not wanting to forgive because it is not easy. Being honest, it is not easy. It is painful. The pain is real. The people around us that had hurt us are real. I can imagine different, uh, different uh, situations around us that can hurt our heart. And that is real. That is 100% real. But we have the option to forgive. We have the option to forgive. We can think that it was, in that moment, was only about him. We can think that in that, in that moment was uh, about, okay... I can deal with this being 100% God. Sometimes, being honest, sometimes I think, okay, maybe Jesus was there as a condition of man, but, in, but uh, inside he was being God. You know, not, not feeling any pain, not feeling any shame, not feeling any, uh, nothing around there and around him. But I, I believe 100% that he was 100% man whenever he went hanging on that cross. And, I can, and I, can, I can tell that the pain is real. I can tell that um, that situation that hurt your heart is real. I can imagine whenever it uh, came come to your mind that the relationship that you just uh, broke, maybe a few months, and you can, uh, you can think, okay, how can I forgive these people that hurt me? Seeing this person in another relationship Finding the love of their life. How can I forgive my parents? How can I forgive my father whenever he was there, but was not there for me? Whenever he was there, but he never tell me, uh, told me, I love you. How can I forgive that? How can I walk through this situation? God, you don't understand me. You not understand me. How can I forgive the people that abuse me sexually? How can I walk on freedom remembering that person that, that abused me? How can I do that? How can I do that? And I love one part of this verse. The very last part of the verse says, uh, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. And this phrase just uh, jumped out of the pages. And uh, I was wondering, this is something that I don't comprehend. I don't understand that Jesus didn't say, Father, I forgive them. He says, Father, you forgive them. Father, I don't need to forgive them because I already forgave them. In the midst of the pain, he decided to forgive them before praying, before even, even talk to his father. He came to his father and told him, Father, you forgive them. 
you forgive them. I don't have anything on my heart. I don't have any pain on my heart for, against them. I already forgave them, but you forgive them, Jesus. And what I can see here is that forgiving, and that it is possible to forgive in the midst of our greatest pain. It is possible to forgive in the midst of our greatest pain. Sometimes we believe Jesus could wait until he died, rise again, go to heaven, and then say, okay, we'll forgive him. I don't, have, I don't feel any pain now. I'm 100% God now. I will forgive them now. But he decided to forgive them in the midst of, the big, of his biggest pain. So sometimes we think, sometimes we think, we have heard that times heal everything. Have you? I have heard that so, so many times. And that is a lie from the enemy. That is a lie from the enemy. Times don't heal nothing. Someone, I, I, heard, I heard someone saying that to me one time. Uh, resentment is pain multiplied by time. Pain multiplied by time. So sometimes we think that the time is healing the pain that we're feeling. But the time is creating a resentment. That is what really is happening. So Jesus decided to, to forgive in the, midst, in the midst of his biggest pain. On the midst of his biggest, uh, uh, on the midst of his biggest pain. And there is something that I love about this story. And it is that uh, whenever he was on that cross, he could done whatever. But he talks to his father. He talks to his father. He knew that he needed to run to his father. So that teaches me that I need to do the same thing. Whenever I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing, whatever I'm experiencing, whatever the pain is, whatever is hurting me, there is nowhere else to run but my father. Sometimes we run to being honest. This is me. I'm talking about me. Sometimes I run to the doctor. Sometimes I run to the bank. Sometimes I run to the social medias. Who else? I think... My, I think a lot of us, <laughs> sometimes we run to social medias and we see Shakira singing, <laughs> women don't cry, <laughs> women get the bill, <laughs> la mujer no llora, la mujer factura, sometimes we, we see that, <laughs> sometimes we see different posts and we think and we believe and we believe that that is what we need to do too. And Jesus and the Father and God and the Savior is our last option. I have tried this, I have tried that. This is my last option. But Jesus did the opposite. He ran to his father. And he, because he knew that prayers bring healing. Prayers bring healing. I believe that. I believe that. If you have somebody that you're hating, you don't hate no one. I know that you don't hate no one. <laughs> but try praying for that person. And I bet you, I promise that you won't feel anything bad about that person, about that people. I promise you that. I promise you that. I remember, um, I remember one time, uh, last year actually, I was, I was going to sell a hammer drill. You know hammer drill? So I posted on, on Facebook, on Marketplace, and uh, I posted there. <laughs> they know the story. <laughs> so anyway, I found a buyer. And uh, he offered me the exact same amount that I was asking for. So I went to the city. I was so happy. I was going to sell that things. I was going to make a little extra money. So I got there. And this guy called me and told me that, you know what? I can't make it, but my secretary will be there. So it sounded even better. So this guy has money because he has a secretary. You know, he's professional. So I got there. And whenever I got there, he called me and, to, and, and, and tells me, uh, you know what? The traffic is so bad. So I won't make you go to the company. You can wait for my secretary on the corner. I was so happy. I didn't think that they were going to do what I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> so I got there. And this lady came and she gave me a check. That seems every, even more professional, right? Okay, they don't, they don't are uh, carrying my, uh, cash. They're carrying uh, checks. And she told me, God bless you. Oh, man. This is so holy. I said, this is so, so holy. <laughs> so anyway, I gave, her, I gave her the hammer drill. She gave me the check. I went to the bank. It was um, maybe four minutes away. 
I got to the bank. And when I got there, that account didn't exist anymore. I tried to call the guy, never respond. I tried to call the lady, never respond. I got so, so mad, so frustrated. It hurt my ego, being honest. I was so frustrated, and I was walking to, to the parking lot, and my wife, my beautiful wife, saw my face, and she knew that something happened in that moment. I was so mad. I wish them the worst thing ever. I wish that they were by, driving a bike, and suddenly a truck came behind me. <laughs> Not anymore. I forgave them already. I forgave them this week before preaching here. <laughs> Because I needed to. God was, God was talking to me about that. <laughs> I told my wife, you know what? I was remembering, okay, who I need to forgive to. And God, and Jesus brought that person to my mind. I never met, I just met this girl. But I was so mad. But uh, I, could, I could forgive them in the midst of that. I didn't. And I was so angry. I had my check, and I had that check on my wallet. I remember that I had the check on my wallet. And every time that I opened my wallet, I remember them with pain. I remember them with anger. I remember, her, I remember them with frustration. <laughs> and one day I just decided, you know what? I will leave. I will let, the, I will let it go. I just will let it go. And sometimes it is that easy. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Like frozen. Let it go. Yeah, and sometimes that is something that I won't sing. <laughs> I won't see and I, and I remember I remember that I, I wanted justice. I wanted justice in that moment. That was my prayer. I want justice. But Jesus in that cross, in the midst of need for justice, he, Jesus prayed for mercy. He prayed for mercy. And he says, Jesus, forgive them. Jesus, forgive them. He didn't deserve what he was experiencing in that moment. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him, in who? Him. We might become the righteousness of God. It was fair for us to be on that cross. It was fair for me to pay the price of my sin. It was fair for me to pay the price for my salvation. That was fair. That was fair. It wasn't fair for him to be on that cross. But in the midst of the pain, his prayer was full of mercy and full of humility. And that made me think, sometimes it's not fair that that person that just got the job and how... And the one that he's working with me right now got uh, the puesto, got the position that I've been waiting for so long. It is not fair. I've been in this company for the last 25 years. And this person come now, a month later, a month after, now he has the position that I wanted. It is not fair. It is not fair. It is not fair that this person that hurt me, now it is in another relationship. And this person found it, the love of his life, her life. It is not fair. It is not fair that I have to come to my father and ask him and apologize myself whenever he was the one that hurt me. It is not fair. But we are not talking about what it is or not fair. Jesus was not thinking about what was fair in that moment. Jesus was thinking on you and me. Jesus was thinking on your salvation, my salvation. He was thinking on us. So sometimes it's not fair. It is not fair. But it's not about that. I love seeing details, many details in this story. And, uh, and I love that in that moment, he remembered the one. He remembered the one. It was not only about us. It was not only about the salvation. It was not only about what was happening at that, that very moment. He was thinking that there were two people next to him. There were one on the left, one on the right. And he remembered that. He remembered that. He remembered the one. Because he knew that in our biggest battle, in the biggest pain, in the biggest uh, situation, that we revealed 
that will reveal who we really are. He had the opportunity to call a thousand angels in that moment and take him from that cross. But he knew that he needed to reveal himself to the people that were next to him. He knew that there was still one more. And he knew that he wasn't willing to finish the mission until the mission was finished. He knew that there's still one more. So I ask you now, what is that one that is seeing you? What is that one that is next to you? What is that one that is waiting for you to success? What is the one that is next to you waiting for you to help? What is the one that is next to you waiting for a call? Waiting for a coffee? Waiting for a text message? Waiting for a word of, waiting for a word of, of, uh, of animal encouragement? Who is that one? Who is that one? Jesus could make everything, everything different. I have heard this phrase that, uh, I don't know if you, but some people say, okay, money, the money changed that person. The power changed that person. But not the money, not the power. The money and the power just reveal who that person was, who really was. The pain showed who Jesus was. The shame shows what Jesus was. In that moment, he was revealed. In that moment, he was revealed. And that reminds me that the pain exposes what is in my heart. Pain exposes what it is in your heart. Difficulties will expose what it is in your heart. What is in your heart? What is in your heart? What is in your heart? Don't think that uh, the fame will expose us. Don't think that the money will do it. Don't think that the power, but the difficulties will do it. The hard moment will do it. The pain will do it. Luke uh, chapter 23 verse 20, 39 says, One of the criminals who hung there hurtly insult at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said. Since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. So then he said, Jesus, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Oh, this just blows my mind. This just blows my mind. There was still one that needed to be saved in that moment. There was still one that needed to be saved in that moment. And we, as a children of God, we have one people next to us. Could be your children, could be your wife, your husband, could be your friend, could be your co-workers, could be your leader, could be your disciple. We will always have one that is seeing us, that is following us, that will repeat whatever we do, that will repeat whatever we say. And we need to be careful about that. We need to be careful about that. In that moment, Jesus remembered that what was happening to him, it was not only about him. The gifts that God has put in your hand is not only about you. It's about others. The marriage that God has given to you, it is not only about you. It's about others. The resources that God has put in your hands are not only about you. It's all about others. And you now, the friends that he had put in your hands, it's not about you. It's about others. So what are, what are we doing with that? But we need to be healed first. We need to be restored first. And I love the songs that we were singing that Jesus is breaking every chain. And I believe that he wants to break chains of pain, of shame. He wants to, bring, to, to break chains of anger. He wants to break every chain. I really believe that. I really believe that. 
And I believe that even in the midst of your biggest pain, you can experience His mercy, you can experience His love, you can experience His hope, you can experience His freedom. There is nothing worse than walk without freedom. Then that there's nothing worse to walk carrying a backpack. You know, whenever you go to uh, the mountain, to the volcano, there's something that you can carry with you. There's different things that you can bring with you. You can bring water, you can bring uh, granola bars, bars, you can bring candies, you can bring, I don't know, an egg. <laughs> but you can decide if you want to bring with you a big piece of stone, a big piece of wood. You won't, you won't use them, but you can bring it with you. There is, there is a lot of things that we can bring with us in our backpack. But I believe that God's right now, God right now, He wants to take whatever that we don't need to bring with us to where, to the place that He's calling us to. He has a place prepared for us, but it depends on us if we want to walk light or with a big weight on us. The bitterness is a big pain. It's something very heavy. The pain is something very heavy. The anger is something very heavy. And it is your decision. It is your choice. That's the title of the message. It's my choice. It's my choice. It is my choice right now to walk in freedom, to walk in obedience, or to live the same way I came. And I'm not saying that you came bad. I'm saying that you can live better. I'm saying that you can live lighter. I'm saying that you can live with Him. I'm saying that you can live forgiven. You can live here, here with so much freedom. So right now, we just want to take a moment to call the prayer partners. We're going to worship right now. We're going to worship right now and declare that uh, Jesus is breaking every chain. And I just want to give you the opportunity right now to come here. This amazing leader will pray for you. And I just want to invite you to forgive. I just want to invite you to, to forgive the people that hurt you, to forgive the people that talk bad about you on your back, to forgive your, fa your father, your mother, your sons, the old relationship. This is a moment that God is creating for you and Him. It's just between you and Him. So as we see in this next song, I just want to invite everyone to stand up. The prayer partner will be here praying, ready to pray for you. So let's believe that He's breaking every chain on our heart. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus.
believe that there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. I believe that you, God, are bringing healing. You're bringing joy. You're bringing freedom. You're bringing hope. I know that there is hope in the other side. There is hope in the other side. There is joy in the other side. There's mercy in the other side. So Jesus, right now we decide to move forward, to walk towards, toward your calling, to be obedient to you. We decided, we decide right now to walk in humility, Lord. We decide to forgive. We decide to let it go. And we receive you, Lord. Right now, I just want to give the opportunity. If you haven't, you haven't given your heart to Jesus, this is the opportunity that we have right now. He is calling us. He's asking us to forgive. He wants to walk with us. So on the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand. Maybe you haven't done this before. Maybe it is the very first time. Or maybe you, you want to dedicate your heart again to Jesus so on the count of three I just want to do something very simple but powerful what it is uh, to raise your hand so on the count of three I just want to invite you to do that one two and three we worship you Lord we worship you Lord we worship you Jesus and I want to invite the whole church the whole family to put your hands on your heart and to repeat these words after me dear Jesus I admit that I've made mistakes. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Give me the power to live for you every single day. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.